But then in verse 25, I want to read the scripture to you. He says this. Chapter 19, verse 25, it says, I know that my Redeemer lives. And that in the end, He will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see God. I myself will see Him with my own eyes. I am not another. How my heart yearns within me. Let me read that one more time for you. This is what Job said in the midst of all this. He said, I know that my Redeemer lives. And that in the end, He will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see God. I myself will see Him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Folks, that's a testimony right there. That's a testimony. And that's a testimony that God wants each one of us to have. I know Carolyn did a pretty good job right there on the tape of preaching a good sermon, but I'm just going to, if you don't mind, Rob, I'm going to bring it home. As they say down south. We're going to bring it home. You see, it's not about necessarily belief. It's about a relationship with God. That no there is, is not just an intellectual thing. It's I know with every fiber in my being, even as my being and my body is wasting away. I know. He didn't say, I know that my God lives. He said, I know that my Redeemer lives. In other words, he knows that whatever cost I have to pay, whatever I have to give up, God's going to step in and pay that for me. You see, we believe in a Savior that not only went to the cross just sort of symbolically to pay for sin, He's literally coming back for those who put their trust in Him and He's taking them as His possession. You see, belief in Christ is more than just saying, I think this is true. Because Job didn't say, I think it's true. He says, I know. I know. And he didn't say, I know that there's a Redeemer there. He said, I know that my Redeemer lives. You know? On the tape, you heard Carolyn attest to the fact that she's, she's confident about where she is right now and who she knows. And one of the reasons for things like this, for opportunities like this, is so that we can get a, a chance while we yet live to realize that we're that important to God. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all come to a knowledge of the truth. He's not willing that any of us should miss out on the fact that Jesus has already paid the full price to redeem you from the curse of sin and death. How sweet that death might be, how simple it might be, how, how just uh, there are some people just kind of fall asleep and there they go. Well, others have to go through a really difficult, difficult transition. This is the second death I've had to deal with this week. I go into the jail every week and preach to prisoners. For the last two years, I've been ministering to a group of guys. I go in Wednesday night, and this young man, I say young man because he was only 42, they told me, Michael passed. I went, what? He'd just been in church with me Sunday. He ate a big dinner. He took another dinner home with him. Maybe he died from overeating, but I don't think so. He died overnight, the previous night. They carried him out in a body bag. <laughs> but you know what I know where Mike is I know where his heart was because I saw every time I went in there to preach he had his Bible he had his highlighter and the questions he asked and the conversations we had led me to believe that this was not just a game for him this was not just jailhouse religion this was his chance to redeem a life that had fallen into despair really he was in jail for Sale of crack cocaine. Ten years sentence. A lot of people, that would be a death sentence for a lot of people. But that was what God used to sit Michael down long enough to find the Lord. He found the Lord. He knows the Lord. He's with the Lord. Carolyn found the Lord. She knows the Lord. She's with the Lord. 
I know that my Redeemer lives. And that in the end, you know there's an end coming for each one of us. I realize as I celebrate my 60th birthday today that my end is a little closer than my beginning. I got further to look back than probably I have to look forward. Although somebody sent me a scripture last week, Larry, that said something about uh, a span of a life should be 120 years. So I, I think you're going to get there before me. But I'm hanging on for that. Although I don't want to be 120 and, and drooling, I'd like to be 120 and still kicking. But be that as it may, it says we're all coming to an end. But it says, He will stand upon the earth. You know, I don't know whether you made up your mind about the election or anything else, but guess what? Donald Trump won't be standing on the earth at the end. Neither will Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. Jesus Christ will be standing on the earth at the end. Say, I'm not saying you had who to vote for, but I, well, I am. I'm telling you, vote for Jesus. He's the only one going to be left standing in the end. 